Top news stories in Shelby, spots for funding, flooding concerns, and Charlie. A new traffic safety patrol unit is coming to Shelby Township. Coming up, I'll tell you where they'll be patrolling. All these stories plus much more, but first, back to that top news story. The Board of Trustees is considering selling nine township-owned lots to help fund the improvements to the community center. Three of these lots, located in the Bellamine Manor subdivision, are buildable at the site. One's already appraised at $62,000. The remaining six are buildable but will need minor improvements. The township is proposing to sell them as a package. Interested parties will have until October 14 to submit bids. A vote by the board will take place at the November 17th meeting. Residents who live in the Creekside Village subdivision near 26 and DeQuinder will soon see a fix to flooding problems. Township officials recently approved a bid through Wozniak Underground to remedy the flooding problems. According to officials, drainage improvements will not exceed $150,000. The Macomb County Department of Roads committed $62,000 to help with the cost. The project could begin by the end of October. A robbery happened at Lollipop Children's Consignment Store and the thief got away with a small amount of cash. It happened overnight, October 6, at Lollipop Consignment on 23 and Shaner. The robber also broke into the Pediatric Consultants of Troy building but didn't steal anything there. Here's what happened at Lollipop Consignment. A thief stole the cash register, broke into it in the back room of the shop, took the cash which the owner says was a small amount of money. Well, I walked up to the back door and I noticed our back door handle was spread all over the parking lot. Um, so I kind of looked in, I was a little nervous. Um, then I called um, the police. They came in about 20 minutes later. They went into the store and uh, the cash register was stolen. It's petty, you know, that's, they're not getting away with very much. The owner's upset because the landlord turns off the lights in the back of the plaza overnight, which makes it an easy target for thieves. She's starting a petition to ask for lights and surveillance cameras in the plaza, which has been a victim of robbery several times over the past few months. The Shelby Police Department is looking at ramping up enforcement levels in the new traffic safety unit. Charlie Cadato explains the details. It's been pretty bad. It's no secret Shelby roads can be hard to navigate through rush hour traffic. That's why police have created a new traffic safety unit to help cut down on accidents in the area. I've been here uh, almost nine months now. We've had several uh, very bad accidents on our streets. Uh, we've had some uh, head-on collisions and almost all of them alcohol and drugs were involved. Police Chief Robert Shalide says the Shelby Police Department has 13 fewer officers than it did in 2008. Six new officers will soon be hired to cover traffic safety. We don't really have anybody dedicated to just going out and handling traffic concerns and traffic issues. This unit, that's all they will be doing. They will not be handling 911 runs. The police chief says extra patrols will begin here on 23 and Shaner, which is said to be the most dangerous intersection in Macomb County. We lead the county in accidents at that location. We need officers out doing enforcement in the area, high profile, and that's what the purpose in traffic safety unit is. Shalide says the cause of increased accidents could simply be increased populations. Volumes, volumes of people that pass through there on a daily basis. Uh, I'm sure that 24 mile road being closed right now has something to do with it. We weren't number one over the last three years. That intersection was second until 24 mile road closed. Business owners tell me traffic can be a headache all day as customers move in and out of local shopping centers. Uh, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of cars moving through here, especially with the uh, M53 over here too and everything like that. A lot of, definitely a lot of traffic. I mean, a lot of accidents. I mean, we've just sort of like three in the last couple months. The manager of Simple Computer Repair on 23 and Shaner says extra patrol could help manage traffic volumes in the area. We go on off sites, so we're constantly driving all the way around, especially around here. It's definitely jam packed. I mean, just to make a left on uh, 23 from Shaner right up here, I mean, you're, you're waiting, you're waiting a while. <laughs> That's for sure. Besides patrols, police officers are looking for other solutions to help ease bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic long-term.
We're actually working on a master plan right now to uh, come up with improvements for the location, timing on the road signals, speed limits, proper signage, et cetera, and with enforcement. This is not a tax. This is to get everyone to slow down. And once they slow down, you'll have no issues. If you drive you know, within the speed limit and obey the laws, our unit will never bother you. For Shelby this week, I'm Charlie Cadotto. All right, Charlie, good information on traffic safety. Coming up, Nick, what are you brewing up? A new brewery in Shelby Township. Coming up, I'll tell you what they have in store behind these doors. All right, that story and veterans can get assistance. We'll tell you more after the break. I'm home and I love it. I'm home, I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making home affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Sky Lanterns might not be able to take flight in Shelby, an ordinance was introduced to ban the sale and use of sky lanterns, which are wooden and paper novelties with a small amount of fuel. People light for enjoyment and watch them fly into the sky. But what happens after it gets carried away by the wind is detrimental. The lanterns can come down flaming, landing on homes, pets or acres of farming land, starting fires. Fire Chief Jim Swinkowski stated at the board meeting, there's been several fires documented in the past years worldwide because of lanterns' erratic behavior travels. The board's ordinance would ban sale and use, deeming them a serious fire hazard. Other local towns have banned these lanterns. They're beautiful to see, but their outcome could be dangerous. The Macomb St. Clair, Michigan Works team is hosting a veteran employability boot camp from October 19th to October 21st at the Port Huron Baker College campus. Veteran job seekers can work with Michigan Works staff on important job tips like resume building, cover letters, and interviewing. All participants will receive a career portfolio with tools they can use to gain employment. Those interested in signing up for the Veteran Employability Boot Camp can call 810-966-3319 to reserve their seat, but hurry, space is limited. A local spot is brewing up something good. Nick Buckler reports. Michigan is home to a number of breweries. The newest is right here in Shelby Township. <laughs> Brooks Brewing has perfected their product over a year and a half before opening for business last month and chances are they have something every beer lover can enjoy. I, as a brewer, appreciate every single style. So we go from uh, your American lagers, uh, Blondales, stuff that uh, everybody can drink, you know, all the way to Russian Imperial Stouts, and uh, we got the Goblin King uh, Imperial IPA and everything in between, browns, stouts, reds. The Brooks family envisioned a modern yet industrial brewery atmosphere that they turned into a reality. We're trying to create an atmosphere that's uh, a little bit similar to some of the breweries in uh, the Upper Peninsula and a, uh, a, a fun, different uh, environment than most of the breweries in the area. Brooks has 21 taps full of Shelby Township's best homemade beer. They also pride themselves on having you be a part of the brewing process. I've loved going to breweries for, for a long time. and. Uh, I don't know, I've seen them, see them brew occasionally, but I'm always a little disappointed. You know, I w I've always been interested with the, with the brewing process, and I go to breweries all the time, and it's not real common I get to see them making the beer, so we made the decision really early on that we wanted it to be an open brew house, you know, for uh, everybody to, to be able to see and, and get the experience uh, of, of actually making the beer, feel like they're a part of what they're, what they're consuming. Right now, the brewery is open during the evening on Thursday and Friday while it's open all day Saturday and Sunday. I mean, one of the uh, neat things about this brewery is um, the furniture was all made by us, the bars, the panels above the bars, the brew, the brew stand, and our equipment's all um, made in Michigan. So it's a, kind of a local and Michigan thing, so we're proud of that. Although they don't prepare any food at the brewery, that doesn't mean you can't bring anything in. You can find out more on their website at bebrewing.com.
We can't make food in-house, but we have food trucks on Saturday. We're going to line up a food truck on Friday as well. Uh, and everybody's welcome to bring in any anything they want, any food they want from outside. We had a um, we had a Lions game party on Sunday, and guys brought in a potluck with uh, with Italian sausage and stuff, and it was a good time. So many great things to like about this brewery. My personal favorite is that they brew their beer during business hours so beer lovers can watch the magic happen. For Shelby this week, I'm Nick Buckler. All right, Nick, that looks like a fantastic spot in Shelby. A major animal case was in court recently. A local pet that had a run-in with a child will now be moved to Howell, Michigan. This all stems from an incident that happened over the summer. Here's what we know. Dexter the dog was always allowed into their neighbor's yard, and he did as he always did, and went into his neighbor's yard where some children were playing on a trampoline. The dog bit an eight-year-old child. There were big debates on what should happen to the dog since the child suffered some serious bites on his face. Now, the magistrate ruled that the dog will not be put down. Instead, he'll live his life out on a farm. Protesters from both sides of this issue were outside the courthouse at the time of the verdict. The family did not want to comment on this story. Families, want a new pet? Stacy Sansa reports there's a place closer than you think where you can find your perfect animal. These specific animals that you see at Macomb County Animal Control, they're from your community. So if you really want to get involved and help out with the homeless pet problems, then you need to be adopting the animal from here. And our community is making great strides thanks to the innovations at the Macomb County Animal Control. You know, I feel like our adoptions are really successful right now because, um, one, because I think we have outlets that we're using for the weekends and I think we are also networking them in a different strategizing way. Um, one of the ways is you know we obviously use um, social media. I think another great opportunity that we're utilizing as well as other um, pet shops, um, other facilities that we could actually you know kind of showcase our animals you know at their facilities as well. And showcasing these animals at a familiar location has proven successful. Partnered with Gibraltar Trade Center, um, Bob Kessler, who is amazing, um, allowed us to um, showcase our animals there as well. And that's every Saturday from 10 to 2. Um, so far, we adopted out 39 animals there, so that's amazing, most of them obviously being dogs. Um, because the dogs, um, other than here, because the cats had a place to go, they are going to Pet Supply Plus. So the dogs need another place to be showcased, and Gibraltar was kind enough to let us do that. And since, you know, the actual... Um, kickoff and the ribbon cutting ceremony on um, August 29th, we adopted out over 39 animals there. And the animals waiting for their forever homes are truly ready to go. One of the things that we do here, um, all the dogs are socialized. They go into a play group. As you can see, our small dogs are right now in a play group. Um, so they go into play group. We help socialize them. We heartworm test them. We do um, all their vaccines. So you're getting a dog that's been completely health checked. Um, to the best of our ability here that we have you know the ability to do um, they're all spayed and neutered you know like i said current on all their vaccines but it's your community and i think that people should get involved the community is getting involved as proven by some huge changes and it starts by getting to zero and getting to zero means every adoptable and treatable animal has a chance to be adopted and there's no time limit so once the animal's up for adoption it always stays up for adoption until it's adopted you know, and then we have to do our best to make sure that that animal is being, you know, showcased enough so that the animal can be adopted. And that we're networking, we're working with different animal rescue groups to help get these animals out of animal control and into a more permanent home setting. And those permanent homes are happening due to the dedication of the staff. I'm proud of what I do. I, I'm very passionate about what I do. And the staff is too. We have an amazing core group of people here. You know, we have licensed vet techs. We have, you know, kennel staff. We have, you know, officers that went through the academy. So, and they're nationally certified. They go through all this training so that you can, you know, the residents of Macomb County can have a proud place to say, you know what, not when they hear a story, they could say, well, our animal control is different. You know, we have a 91% save rate. But in two years, we got there. That was a lot of hard work. And, you know, we did it because we're dedicated. And this is not an easy place to work for a lot of people. But for us, it's our passion. This is what we do. So if you are in the market for a four-legged friend, be sure to check out the Macomb County Animal Control. Sometimes all it takes to find your perfect match is to look directly into a pet's eyes and fall in love. 
For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacey Sansatera. Check out the new On Patrol with the Macomb County Animal Control on your local cable channels or online at shelbytv.org. An idea for a new water board association has been on the rise to bring transparency to water rates. Public Works Commissioner Anthony Morocco wants to bring all 18 communities in Macomb together to be part of this water authority, hoping there's more clout with bigger numbers instead of bargaining with Detroit Water. Build a facility that would uh, we would be able to purchase water in bulk from Detroit, and uh, and off peak times when the when the water rate from Detroit is less money, um, we have spread the cost over a greater geographic area, and all that would uh, bring the rates down. So that each individual community bargaining with Detroit and having separate contracts, you know, and then Detroit uh, has these certain uh, parameters that they use and and it affects the communities in a way that it makes their rates go up too high. So if we're in a, in a bigger unit, we can get those rates down, blend them. We'll blend them out and uh, pass on the savings, you know, 9, 10% maybe right off the bat to the communities. Water rates vary between $6 to $20 per cubic feet. Here's how this new water authority can help us get the biggest bang for our buck with our water. They would buy up water from Detroit when water is cheapest. There are a couple increments. There's a maximum day uh, increment and a peak hour increment. And so depending on historical usage throughout that maximum day, how much volume that, that community uses in, in potable water, and then the peak hour that is coincident with the system peak hour uh, plays a part in your rate. So if a community is using more water during that peak time period, they're obviously charged more uh, per uh, unit of water uh, because it takes more energy to supply that. So that peak time period varies. It varies from summer to summer. It's obviously de dependent on weather, dependent on uh, customer consumption, um, but that is a uh, um, previous peak hours, system peak hours are, are determined by the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department. Morocco's reaching out to officials, supervisors, and DPW departments to engage their interest. There's other water authorities in other regions, and Macomb used to have a group as well. The grades for this year's school buses are in, and Macomb County passed with flying colors. All 22 of Macomb County's public school systems passed the school bus inspections, 12 of them with perfect scores. The state uses a color system to code the buses during inspections. Red means unsafe, yellow means unsatisfactory, and green means passing. Out of Utica Community Schools 235 buses, only three were red tagged and five were yellow tagged. The 226 green tags put them at a 96.2% pass rate. This year's inspections also led to a new way for parents to learn about the safety of the bus which their children ride. School buses have now been fixed with a code for parents to scan, showing them which color tag the school bus received. And speaking of schools, UCS will be one of the first communities in Michigan to allow students and families access to Naviance, a college and career planning tool. Through Naviance, parents can access a web-based program that creates a personal action plan for their child. Family Connection, the unique new tool, offers parents a one-stop shop where they can support their children on the road to success. Through Family Connection, parents can view step-by-step -step instructions for completing the free application for federal student aid. It offers materials for SAT assessments and prep courses. Parents of all 10th through 12th grade students receive access to Family Connection as part of this school year's registration process. For those with students in 9th grade, parents will receive access in March. We have a road construction update for you. Shelby Road to Van Dyke is open two ways while crews are still out directing traffic while they fix driveways. Also, west of the trail is two-way traffic on 24 Mile. From DeQuinder to Macomb Orchard Trail is two-way traffic. Then, when you hit the trail, it's eastbound traffic allowed only. Some improvements to Jewel to Van Dyke. That stretch is still closed, so don't go past Maystecker Park. Coming up next, Halloween is among us. We've got the spot for you to check out. Stay tuned. So... 
I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Tick, 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 massive heat waves, heat waves, tick, severe droughts, tick, 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 devastating, devastating hurricanes, tick, 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 our future is up to you. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. A spooky event is coming up in Shelby and all the little ghosts and goblins are welcome. The spooktacular event is going on on Saturday, October 17th at Riverbends Park. Families can enjoy trick-or-treating, games, goodies galore, plus a Halloween craft and a wagon ride. Get dressed up in your best costume and come out to Riverbends from noon until 3 p.m. Rain or shine. Ghosts, goblins, and pirates are all welcome. The Zombies Walk again is, was a hit as downtown Utica held their zombie fest, scaring everyone in attendance. The fourth annual Zombie Fest happened in downtown Utica. There was face painting and other zombie-fying events. Well, this is our fourth annual Zombie Fest. Uh, we do a lot of things with the kids. We have a like a trick-or-treating that's actually happening right now. Also a zombie run, uh, which will really expand next year. I think we're going to move it towards the evening. And uh, we'll have the baseball stadium across the street that will be able to uh, be used for our uh, for any event, basically, that we're going to be doing in downtown Utica. Plus, our bike path is going to be done. That's all. Uh, could all come together at the same time, so it should really make for uh, different events and real fun events. Uh, we're sponsoring this event. It's our first year. Uh, we look forward to having more and more traffic every year. It's been great so far. We have a lot of makeup going on. Uh, our makeup is also done in store, so anybody can come on in and make an appointment, and we can get you guys done for any party. Uh, for Halloween, all the way until November, we can do uh, makeup. Um, we're also offering for Utica residents 30% uh, off the enti your entire purchase. Uh, just bring uh, your ID that shows you live in Utica and we'll honor a 30% off for you. Today we're doing uh, makeup for all the volunteers and also all the visitors coming to participate in the zombie walk and everybody's looking great. Uh, all gray makeup and blood and teasing the hair and Hit blood in the hair. Uh, everybody's looking fabulous. We're really excited about that. People got zombified all over the city, even at the fire station. And what else would they have going on at a zombie fest than a blood drive? Shelby resident Barb Sheehy stopped by to donate, and her son is a local firefighter. The whole family was giving back at this zombie fest. A worthwhile thing to do. My father was recently in the hospital and received many units of blood, so therefore I feel that replenishing things is a worthwhile thing to do to save someone else's life. I'm here also for the open house. My son is a uh, firefighter for Utica, so wanted to come down and give them some support. I think what they do is wonderful. I mean, the, the lives that they save and the people that they help, it's tremendously helpful for everybody, and uh, you never know when you're going to need it. We've got volunteers that are doing makeup for us. Proceeds go to our parks and rec programming. So it'll be a lot of fun. We're hoping next year we can do zombie apocalypse in the baseball park, which will be very nice. That's always a great way to kick off the haunted season. Shelby Township seniors got a taste of Halloween when the Senior Center held a pumpkin decorating contest Pumpkins were given life as contestants used paint, paper, and their imagination to adorn the autumn gourds. The finished pumpkins are on display at the Senior Center, where they'll be voted on and one will be crowned winner. My favorite one was the pumpkin pie. 
And that's Shelby This Week. You can watch us online all the time. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ShelbyTWPTV. Thanks for watching.